Welcome to Same as Handy. So this video, a friend asked me to make a video on how to make money off of the land. So I'm, that's what he asked me to do, but I kind of, I kind of, kind of want to think of it more as property assets. Because land is an asset, my truck is an asset gives me to, to do services, gets me around, and I can get paid. And that means money. And that's what it gives me. It gives me money for service that I provide. So land is the same thing. It's a vehicle. Well, not, not on wheels. It's a vehicle. It's a vehicle, you know, for assets. You can, I probably won't, this is my, I'm not, completely right and uh, <laughs> so an asset think of things like an asset what does it give me um, how much am I going to pay for that asset and land is, is also the same thing in your apartment if you bought a condo people could buy condos instead of buying a house on land with some land they have no space to do anything but I have an option for those people that have an, a condo apartment they bought or they rented. Um, and uh, you can make a living and also provide food on the table. And so the other thing is a lot of people they don't like to to be controlled. It's just it's not a bad thing. It's just the fact that People like to have their own piece of the pie. It just makes them feel good. I mean, there's, it's like going to Thanksgiving dinner, and but you don't get any pie. I want one. I want one slice, or I want my own pie. You know, I mean, it makes people feel good. There's nothing wrong with that. So having your own piece of the pie in the world, it would be nice. So, you know, my parents, my mom and dad have their own piece of the pie. They bought their own house. Everyone wants that. They want their own house. You know, is it, for you, is it, do you want your own house? Or do you want a little place to live in a trailer? There's nothing wrong with that. You just want to feel great about yourself because you did something. You accomplished something. But also, the main thing is that you're not controlled you're not being controlled by them, it's just that you have to respect them because that's their piece of the pie. You don't go take your, your sister's pie, slice of the pie. Because you have your own slice of the pie. That's hers. But everyone wants their own slice. So my sister, I'm gonna and I um I'm gonna mention her her husband. They've been living with our parents for a while. You know, it's hard. I mean people every family is an individual family and you have your own goals and to live in the same household where your goals are different not your standards goals are different and and try to you know you have to compromise and that's the hard thing you got to compromise it's just the whole respect factor and so this one house down the road has been in probate for a long six months or so um, if you know what probate is basically the um, descendants of somebody passing away has this property and the descendants uh, are trying to sell it and they're just yeah long details don't ask me I, if you ask me I'll go take forever researching it and give you more answers but it's been in probate and it's been vacant and they've been the kids of the family have been fixing it up and so my sister and her husband are They've, they've been thinking about they really want their own house and it's nice, it's close to, to my parents and for their kids to come and see their grandparents. You know, it's two houses down, super nice. I'll show you down if you can see it, it's the white one down there. Um, you can see it again. And uh, it, it's nice, that house is nice because it's got a blank slate in the backyard and the, and the front yard. Yes, it's an older house. The guy had it since the 80s. And it's gotta be, it's a fixer-upper. And the great thing that my sister and her husband, 
they're what they've gotten themselves into is that they can design it however they want. Yes, I can give them suggestions, but they don't have to take my suggestions. Let's say I was in, let's say we were in their boat. You know, let's say I bought, the, or you bought their house, and you were my, you know, in their, you know, in their shoes, right? You don't have to listen to whoever says it. It's nice to get suggestions, and then you can put the pieces together, you know, because, for example, our neighbor across the street, he bought his house a couple months ago, and, oh, about six months ago, and he, he, Got it, it was old, I mean, everything was outdated. It was like the original, original stuff, like from the 70s. And he gutted that out. So my sister, my sister and her husband and I went over there to go look at it. I really never been in the house. And it was, he was he's got construction background and he's got a crew of guys that did it for him. He owns a business of construction. and. And but to, for them to see the, the, their design of their house was nice. So, anyways, they can design it however they want. My si sister, she really wants to be self-sufficient to provide food for her family, not money. That's the other thing: is do you want money for your land, or do you want food? I mean, it, you look at it. We don't need to always need money. We really don't. There's, there's some ex things like fees and taxes you have to pay, but you got to decide what do you, what is worth it for you. Do you want your Netflix account, which I don't have? Do you want a cell phone service? I don't have, which I can tell you how to. If you answer, if you ask me in a comment below, I'll give you the answer in a video. Um, but you don't need to have all these fees and taxes. You just got to eliminate and don't get subscriptions unless it's worth it for you and the neighbors you know it's your dog I don't know if the dog was trying to like herd me or something but if you eliminate your taxes and your and your fees I mean you're gonna have taxes on your property that's given and I'm not saying avoid taxes at all I'm not saying that at all that's I don't. I, I think you should pay taxes. The government does, in some extent, does help us, and I'm, I'm glad to give taxes. I might be angry about some, but anyways, for if you provide food or money, that's the two things you can get out of it. Something that provides for you, and how you look on land is it's an asset, like my truck, it's an asset for my business. So, an asset gives you money that comes back or provides you something. That's more business minded terms. But you've got to think for a family, you've got to think business minded. So, my truck gives me, gets me from place to place to serve, to, to provide a service for people, and they give me money. Like yesterday, I went to do two trims. It took me an hour for two little foals and trimmed them $45 each I don't profit all that money by the way um, I, I don't steal from my business but they gave me a t $20 tip so I came out about $110 and that feels great I provided something that's what this truck gave me it's $110 in an hour pretty good money and for land you can do the same thing. It can provide you food. It's an asset that can provide you food and it can provide you money if you want to. So we'll take a little tour. There's my truck. First, we'll go down this house. My sister bought. Neighbor's working on his car. I don't really come out about people like, what's he doing? So, we're at the house, two doors down. 
can tell. Hopefully. We don't need to view the whole thing. That's the house. It's a runner. Run down house. Fixer upper. Not really run down. Just needs to be taken care of. Nice and beautiful thing about it. Blank slate. You don't need to do anything. So we're coming, there's a big tree behind me, but the front yard of my parents' house is, you know, got squash, you got, you know, artichoke and strawberries in the back. And we have silky chip chickens up here. So all this provides us something, it provides. Does it give us money? About that. Does it give us money? Occasionally. If we want to sell something. Good about you, Andrew. So provides us money once in a while. That's the family fund for college fund for grandkids. For my grandkids and for my kids. So you can provide for your food, the land's going to give you food, or it's going to give you money. You can sell vegetables, 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 or you can sell eggs, or you can sell chickens, or you can sell peas, you can sell carrots, you can sell grass clippings. So in Walla Walla, there's a farm, probably about 15 acres, and they just grow grass and they have a contract with a big company and they have they just cut out squares and there's a the grass and they sell it make money that's still land properties about I, I don't know if I mentioned it but if you have an apartment and you're like well how can I provide for myself an apartment pretty easy there's two ways about it though you can have something if you can hear the water. Shh, quiet, quiet, really quiet, really quiet. Can you hear it? Take your head. You can hear it, that's good. Tower gardens. These are my sisters. She has her own opinion on farming. I can respect that. But she really likes these. She doesn't like using soil. I mean, I, I kind of agree. Soil's a pain. Deweed, deweed. These are nice. You don't have to deweed as much. But you can have it in your apartment. This is by a company called Tower Gardens by Juice Plus. Juice Plus, yes. Here's the name. Here's the logo. See that? And they're, they, I don't know, they're, they're about $1,000 each. And they have these little sponges in here and you put your plant in. And the pump... I think only one working? I think they're rotating. So you have your water source down here and a pump, and it pumps the water up and then it comes back down. Up and down. And you don't have soil and you don't have you don't have weeds. Nice. And it provides you something. So do you really need land? Well, yes you do. Apartment is property a condo is property can you make a smaller size like this yes you can can you make something that doesn't cost you a thousand dollars like that like this yes you can my channel i'm not saying this is a how-to channel on i know it's cms handy and handies you can you can cut things and measure things and you can lay down and show you this is how you do it. Um, I'm inspiring, asp aspiring to be handy so I can be self-sufficient. So I don't have to spend a thousand dollars on something like this. I can make my own out of PVC if I really wanted to. If you have an apartment, you can probably, I've seen some that they hang 
and you could probably hang it on your um, your overlook, whatever you call it. Your you can hang it outside. That's pretty nice. Can't complain. I know most people rent, so you really don't need to own any property to provide for yourself. And could you sell that if you had enough? Yeah, I think you could sell um, your your produce. You could sell that without having land. So land is not always the answer. Land is nice to say, this is mine, I don't have to listen to you. That's nice. For, to make money off of land, you don't really don't need land all the time. For instance, I have my truck. My truck gives me place to place, makes me money. I, I mean, I provide a service, gives me money. So, that's nice. I could use my trailer. If you guys see my video on my trailer, it's kind of, it gives me options. I can use it as a fair, a, a horseshoeing rig, or I can use it as a hot dog stand if I really want and needed to. Um, <laughs> or I can rent out my trailer and say, oh, you need, a, you need a trailer for the weekend? I got a trailer. Just pay me a hundred bucks. You know, that'd be nice. Some people would be like, sure, 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 I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And You know, and that's nice, you know hundred bucks I mean it's like hey hundred bucks you know that just helps me to keep the maintenance on my trailer and so you can use it later down the road or other people can yeah and then you can pocket that you know money is just an um money is this an is a, a vehicle to 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 get you places to give you get get you get you out there for more options in the world and to keep you afloat that's all what money is um but remember, you don't need a nine to five job. You can say, "Oh, what do I have? What could I rent out?" And you know, when someone says, "Hey, I need to use something," yes, and he's like, "Yeah, I have a trade." He's like, "Oh, can I use it?" Yeah, if you can just, you know, you know, pay me seventy five bucks or something. That's another idea I just got. You know, you, you know, it's just a verbal agreement, and they destroy it. You just mention if you do anything, you're gonna fix it. Most people respect that. That's the same with your land. So, I'm going over here. These geese are loud. Chickens, poultry. Our family's always had chickens, it seems like, growing up. Chickens is our thing. Um, we have some bait. We have an incubator that my dad bought. It's inside. I have a video on that. And, um... Oh shoot, we have a lot we're downsizing right now. We're trying to, it's hard. We just don't want so many roosters. So what we have is turkeys, Buff Orientons. I don't know what the turkey brand breed is called. Buff Orientons is what we like a lot. They're docile, they don't really peck at kids. Um, we have Americana hens, which we like the hens. We just don't like the roosters. We just don't want to breed them anyways. Unless they're breeding to our French, our black copper Marian, French black cop, copper Marian, I could be saying that wrong. So we can make olive eggers, which have an olive egg. And then we have a mixed breed that I collect, I collected some eggs, which I didn't know. <laughs> they are a buff orange and Americana. And we'll just use those hens. If there's roosters, we'll get rid of them somehow. And use those for just laying in the future. We have plenty. We have like 16 of those mix. And then we have, we just got a hatch, a batch hatch of olive eggers. And those will give our olive egg color to them. And I'll show them in this video real quick. Let's go over here. And these are, I found this rooster, that French black dude, whatever, copper. And I found it for free. And I was like, oh, perfect. You know, because you get to spend money. So that's, that's one good way to do it. You just have to look for some free stuff and it's worth it. You can't get things for free, I mean, in some way. Okay, it's kind of dark in there, but can you see them? Can you see them? They're all laying. They're like, hey guys. So the blue and the dark ones are going to be the olive eggers. The other ones are mixed. But all those eggs, all of those ones, they those eggs came from our pen of 
with the that with that rooster and the Americanas. And so I don't know I don't know if they had some eggs that they came from the Buff Orrington, so but that's fine. Chickens are chickens. But we need a downsize. And we do have silkies, which they're good in this area really well because one people have People don't have a size of an acre that we do. They don't have an half an acre unless you live out the boot, like really the boondocks, like fit out to Barstow and you know far in the desert and down towards Mexico. But we live in the Inland Empire, which we're kind of merged with a lot of other cities. And people like the silkies. They're a good little chicken where you can you can have them in your backyard. They don't fly around. They're not noisy. And they're not an egg production chicken. They're small little eggs. They're bannies. And they're decent. They're nice for little kids to, you know, to get around, get them comfortable with chickens. And so people will sell those. I think my dad's selling them for, shoot, 45 35 People would pay the price if that's what they're looking for, you know. And it's California. It just depends. You know, this one girl I knew from... I was asking her, her and we were talking about how much she charges on trims and chewing. She's like, they charge for 70, 70 bucks for a trim. And I was like, whoa. I mean, that's this higher end people. That's what they want to pay for. That's what they can afford. So they'll pay, they'll charge more. So um, my other option on how to get land and how to use it, you don't need to have land all the time my one of my boss he doesn't have land but he has like a hundred head of horses a hundred head of horses for a dude ride operation and he'll rotate them out from land to land um so they can graze and then for the summer he goes up to utah and he does trail rides in utah for the summer back to arizona for winter but and you know in in utah he knows individuals and they'll let him use the land for grazing and it will have some type of agreement and he has a lot of contacts and that's he has a lot of contacts that he won't share so I can't blame him you know it's his contacts he doesn't want anyone to know he's just try, kind of trying to control his market and so you don't need land um ways to use your land that's a good question us we have chickens we have plants we have vegetation in the front yard and we have compost and for example my professor in, in Wyoming he retired but he had a, a business of a business on the side too where he he was a metal smith creating bar rails for bars and he had a big shop and they call these shops on his own home property shop homes and he's got some property he bought a new property I don't know how much acres he's got a good amount probably 50, 60 acres, no, probably not that much, 40 or some, maybe more. And on his property, he has a shop house. It's cool because you have a shop down below where you do your business and you have your office and all your work, you know, your business is separate to your house, but it's the same location. And then he's got his cows. And so his cows is his investment. And that's one way to do it. And there's more ways you can think about it. You can, I mentioned the Walla Walla, the grass clippings. I think that's more high end. You gotta find contacts. That's another thing. Find contacts for your business approach. You might not need to get a business license, but think business minded. Think how I can make money or how can I provide for myself and for my family? Or what are you providing? That's a good question. And so, like I mentioned, you don't need land. You really don't. You just got to be handy, and you got to be, and you got to have, you got to think outside the box. Be creative. Use your, use your imagination. Um, a lot of different options out there. And for instance, a lot of people. Well, my idea, which I didn't thought about. I don't know why I'm not mentioning this. Is my trailer. There's my trailer. I could live in my trailer, pull my horse, my, um, my, my rig, and I can just go camping and live somewhere and then 
and wait for somebody to contact me or call me and be like, hey, I need this job done. Oh, sure, I'll go help you. And I have my asset with me. I have a place to live. And I can, if that's, let's say you, you are living from place to place and you're not a techie type of bot guy. You don't, you know, you don't want to start an online business and make money that way. What you could do is do what I was mentioning. Get a trailer like this, a cargo trailer, and get a truck. Imagine my truck's in the front. Connect to your trailer and have your work truck and live out of your trailer. Pretty sweet. And I can take, I can leave my trailer at the camp spot, lock it up, take my truck, truck, where's my truck? <laughs> take my truck and go to work. Another thing is, um, when my one boss in Utah, Arizona, he mentioned, no, no, he didn't mention this. This is an idea. You, I'm talking to people, a lot of country people, ran, cattle ranchers will do, is they'll, they'll get a permit, BLM permit, and they'll use that land for the for a certain amount of how long, pay a little small fee, put their cows on it, and for a while, and come back, get their cows off the mountain. So you don't need land; you just got to pay sometimes. But it doesn't come back. Oh, it's not my own piece of land. Yeah, that's true. You don't have your own pride in it. Your own pride. So that option of your truck and trailer. It's a pretty nice, simple way, quick way to, to get your own pride. You know, this is my property. This is my asset to get me some money or something to provide for myself. So that's one option. Um, my other thing I kind of want to, to express, um, to get out there, is that we need to forget about the 9 to 5. You know, I have a 9 to 5 right now. It's only temporary. It's only seasonal. And a lot of people do just seasonal work. I did it at, you know, camps. Camps are great for that. But I think we need to think, because back in the 1800s, our ancestors, they lived off the land. That's, they knew, well, they had to. That's, they had to adapt to that. Um, and it's hard for us to adapt to that because our society and our culture has become... 9 to 5, that's all it is, 9 to 5, 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 right? And we don't know how to be self-independent anymore. We fill our W9, W2, whatever it's called. Honestly, those things are confusing. Uh, they don't make sense. Tax system's all wonky, but... We fill that out, get a job, and we're slaves. We're slaves. I mean, I wouldn't say slaves as in they own you. You don't have no right to be a human. That's sad. But you have you don't have your right to focus on your goals. And you know this temp job I have at um, this skateboard clothing company, Zoomies. It's, you know, it's a nice job. It's only temporary till January until my goal is met, which I won't tell, tell you guys right now, but um, I don't know if I told you in another video, but uh, in January, there's a big life decision I'm, uh, make, make, I'm making. Um, but anyways, it's, it's good. I mean, just give me some money before I, I, I get to that point. But just being there, it's just talking to all the workers, like, they have this temp, they go through the temp agency and they get a part-time job in the afternoon and they have a full-time job, oh, they have their whole job during the day. And I was like, I remember doing that at UPS and I had that job at uh, that uh, security company and during the day and in the more early morning I wake up and go to UPS and uh, fill up the trucks and it was just a nightmare I just, and then I calculated I wasn't making much if I just worked I didn't, wasn't late for my other job which my boss was fine but I would have made more money <laughs> with less hours it was weird I calculated that I remember that 
Um, and I was tired. I would get to my other job from the morning job and sleep. And my boss, he's like, oh, it's fine, I understand. And I told him, like, I was going to quit. But it's just you're controlled. You're not meeting your goals. And if you had your own land, you can do that. And our ancestors, they knew how to homestead. They knew how to be self-sufficient and self-providing. But we've forgot how to do that. We have become the, uh, the slave. The slave of of no freedoms, slave of no control of our own lives, a slave of who, who am I? And you can have your own land, provide for yourself, live with your family, enjoy your family, don't send them to public school, you can homeschool them if you really want to, and you can teach them the values that you believe in, not the value of the world and you got to think how can I do that how can I be business minded business minded that's the key always think business how would a business do that your family is a business so I hope you guys enjoy this video and leave comments below um, Please, and also subscribe to this. Peace out. The peace.